Friday Cup and welcome to another episode for the Media Cast Media Friday here on the Funkin' Pod. It's Friday and you know what that means. We talk about all things media, what happened in the media and we pick one or two topics that we discuss in a bit more detail. Um, since I did this the last few times, I'm doing this this time around once again, I'll give you some news from Thailand because this podcast, as you probably know by now, based in Thailand and so I'll give you some news in regards to what happened in the media in Thailand. First of all, if you listened or watched the last episode of the Media Friday, we talked about this new bill that was proposed here to make basically censorship easier. We saw we said a few um, lawyers and civil rights activists, they opposed it and they, they tried to get the court to dismiss it and that actually succeeded. So the court said you can't have that bill in place here. Um, so yay. Uh, democracy won for for once nice okay um, well the news i have this week and i'm looking at my notes uh, right now so i don't make this up or ma make sure i get all the, the the things that actually were in the news but it's basically um a governmental guideline by the department for whatever health or so i believe and um that the department of health and they were warning against hookups with strangers because it could obviously create clusters if you hook up with too many strangers. Strangers, So they say, hey, if you're like online dating or something right now, don't meet up, don't hook up with anyone. And if you are in a relationship with someone and you have to make love, <laughs> you should do it with a mask on, of course. It's fantastic. And don't kiss anyone or anything, of course. Don't show any sign of affection. That's a guideline from the Department of Health. has been published over the last week or so. Can't make it up. I mean, you could. It sounds like Saturday Night Live. But it's not. It's real. Um, all right. A few more lighter things before we start. Um, if you are online, on Instagram, on I don't know, uh, Twitter, you've seen the memes about the Xbox probably from Microsoft. Xbox here, Xbox there, X, X, X. Everyone's making fun of it, but Microsoft takes the cake because they actually are very good at memeing uh, their own Xbox, <laughs> creating memes about their own Xbox. And like right, um, right now, or the latest one that they brought out was like an Xbox box next to an Xbox and the title was an Xbox Xbox Ser Series X next to its box. So they're not trying to, I don't know, make to try to, I don't know, die it down or like bring out other news or like astroturf it basically. They're like, no, let's jump in on the fun. We think it's funny too and we can we take the cake, so that's kind of nice. Uh, last week we also talked about Black Widow lawsuit and uh, Disney now came out say, defending like their release strategy, being like, hey, it's the pandemic, why should we wait for like the cinema when people don't go to the cinemas? All the things we expected, they would say, makes complete sense, can't fault them for that. Um, I still think this will lead to different kinds of contracts and so on in the future. And we'll have to wait and see how streaming now probably being the number one revenue stream while i'm saying this i'm hesitating but definitely coming close to the cinemas i would as i would love to see some some actual um numbers there but i mean it must get closer and closer because they deciding more and more to publish um movies on streaming services uh, right away so um this definitely is going to change the the movie landscape i believe um we also talked about censorship and there's not one week where we can't talk about censorship, where we don't have to talk about censorship. This time around, this time around, it's in Zambia. There are presidential elections right now, and now they block social media. That's of course only to make sure that there are no disruptions out there, that there are no people disrupting the elections using social media to spread fake news. And I like, yes. If the Thai government sees that, I can already imagine how the next elections here will look like. Uh, since we talked about Netflix and before we go into the, the deeper part uh, of this week's podcast, since you already talked about Netflix, I also found a very funny uh, site called Nestflix, N-E-S-T, Flix, and they show, showcase movies within movies or series within series. 
sounds weird, but it's actually kind of fun. So they have like lots of yeah shows, movies out there that are famous for like having shows in the shows. Like The Simpsons, they have like smaller shows within the show, right? Um, so they showcase those, uh, which is kind of funny. You can't watch it, but they have like screenshots from it and you click on it, you get more information. Really, really funny, really cool thing. Uh, check out Netflix. I think funny. Uh, it's a really fun project. I appreciate that. That was uh, that's well done. I like that. Okay. Um, well, I tried not to talk about COVID too much in, in at least in the, the media Fridays, but uh, Airbnb and Dodish Dodish came out with like their report uh, er, earnings reports and shows. Um, yeah, hey. <laughs> well, they're doing well, of course. Um, but we can also see, of course, that now that the Delta, Lambda, whatever variants you have, wherever you are right now, are taking up speed, that the real life economy, of course, is going to struggle and is eventually also going to reflect on Airbnb, DoorDash, and whatnot. I mean, Airbnb probably now, I was about to say boom, but it got boosted. Um, because some countries open again more and people travel more and it's like, yes, let's do it. Cool. Now with like Delta, Lambda and what out, uh, probably going to take a hit again. DoorDash, uh, well, just like here in, in Thailand, uh, we have Grab uh, or Food Panda. And many people delete it by now. <laughs> if you don't know why uh, Google or Food Panda deleted Thailand, you will see what happened. Um, anyway, so... The thing is, those those apps, they can all only grow so much, right? I mean, yeah, sure, during the pandemic, everyone uses them, uh, but eventually there's a ceiling, right? I would assume. So uh, let's see how much more growth they can report um, when it comes then to the next quarter and so on. Um, while saying this, by the way, I sh that's why I'm hesitating. I just watched or listened to a latest Joe Rogan experience, and he was having really hard time saying lambda like because they talked about like with andrew schultz they talked about different COVID strains whatever and then he's like lambda lam, la, la, la. schultz is lambda and rogan tries to say lambda and he says like lamba and whatnot so, joe rogan what's up too much weed or is, is that your kryptonite saying lambda uh anyways let's let's move on to a few more shorter shorties and then we go into the the deep uh detailed topic for for this week um LinkedIn came out uh, saying, hey, you can now have video meetings on LinkedIn, on the LinkedIn app. That took a while, right? I mean, one would, one would think, yeah, of course. Now that I realized that it wasn't an option, like, why wasn't this an option before? So that makes complete sense. Um, all for it, of course. So yeah, smart move by LinkedIn. Took, took way too long, but uh, makes sense. Uh, since we're now on the social media side of things, let, let's keep going. Instagram added new features to help protect users from bullying uh, and abuse. And you can obviously block people, but you can also say um, they have now this, this new feature called limit. So you can limit your posts or your profile to certain audiences. You can turn it off and on whenever you feel like it so that certain audiences cannot even interact with you. And it's all on the heels of the um, European Championship uh, abuse that the British football players had to endure no, it's a serious issue, but I mean, normal people have to endure this all the time and it only gets f fixed or worked on when it's celebrities, right? Yeah. But I mean, better late than never. So, okay. And on those he the heels of this, uh, TikTok also coming out saying they increase safety measures uh, for younger users. Uh, they have like this new default if you are, I think, 16, 17. Uh, and even younger, if you're a younger user, they disable DMs now anyway. So if you are younger than I think 16 or 17, uh, your DMs are disabled. And when you upload something, it's gonna ask you who the audience should be. So should it be like private or public or whatever? And if, you create, if you're younger, I think 13 to 15 or so, um, your profile will be automatically private. Uh, so that's uh, a few ways that they try to help prevent the abuse uh, of young teen users um, I mean at least they're trying something let's see how it goes 
I mean, if you're a creep, you still find a way around uh, fake profiles and whatnot. Uh, but I mean, it's nice that they at least also try to raise the awareness of the users. Like right? so if you see a prompt as a, as a user, if you're 13, 14, 15, and you upload something and it tells you, hey, you're sure you want the world to see this? So it makes you think about it first. Uh, actually, I had a, not related to, not necessarily completely related to this, but I had a discussion the other day with our faculty. Um, we were on a live stream on Facebook Live. Check it out. Um, and then one of my colleagues actually said she would like to have social media. And she's not the first one to say that. She's, she said that she would like to have social media have a pop-up. Like you post something and it's like, I wish sure you want to post this. Are you really sure you want the world to see this? And she's not the first one to say that. Like many people said, I think even Joe Rogan said that too way back when. Um, just relates to this again, maybe that really would be a good idea to actually say, are you sure you really want to post this? But this would, of course, decrease engagement um, and content publishing on those platforms, and that's not what they want. But generally speaking, in order to tackle the issues that we have, maybe this would be a good idea. One of the other things we discussed in this talk was also um, like how we interact on social media and why the woke culture is such a thing, PC and so on. Um, and how, how way back when, when I started using the internet, for example, if you would go to a forum and you would say something inappropriate, people would be there and like put you in a place. Like, hey, you can't say this. Like, what's wrong with you? Right? That was like the forum back then. But these days, that's not the case anymore because then if someone doesn't like it, it's like, hey, let's cancel this person. And then you just need to find enough people to be like, yeah, I don't like, I don't like his face. I don't like his red hat, whatever. Like, let's cancel him. And then even though you didn't say something completely out of line, you just said something that a big group of people doesn't agree with, then they can cancel you. And that's what, what we see like a lot on like on YouTube or whatever, Facebook, Twitter, and so on, right? And no, I'm not conservative. If anything, I would be the opposite, I, I assume. But we can see that this, this woke movement uh, is a thing. I don't need to tell you, you you've, you've all seen this probably, um, and I don't want to go too much into detail there, but we ended up with the discussing, like, what's the fix? What can you do to fix this? This wokeness mob, censorship, who should censor? And my colleague is from China, and she's like, hey, I see that people hating on China because the Chinese government censors so much, but you guys in the West, you have tech companies censoring, right? And that's a fair point, <laughs> I think. Uh, the government doesn't censor. Like most Western countries, the government doesn't censor much. <laughs> but um, the tech companies do, right? YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, they decide what's on the platform, what's not on the platform. Then again, you can say, yeah, okay, but it's a platform uh, that's their business, so they can decide it. And that's now where we go in circles, right? So what's the question, or what's the solution here? What would be ideal? Ideal might be um, kind of moderated censorship. Like a take off really harmful stuff. Of course, we would all agree, agree with this, right? But then who decides what's harmful and what's not harmful? Right. So it's so the tech companies. This is the government that gives guidelines. Then how will the tech company interpret those guidelines? Yeah, so there is no perfect solution, obviously. Who should do it? You, me, a consortium, so to speak, of, of, of people. Um, the village elders, I mean, it, that's always been an issue, right? Everywhere, everywhere that when, where there's no dictatorship involved, it's always been an issue, like who makes the decision if it's not the dictator? Should we have a dictator? <laughs> and like they said, the, the village elders, like the, the, I don't know, the tribal chiefs, so to speak. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Jack Dorsey, that's, that's how it is right now, kind of, right? So hard, hard, hard thing to discuss. I'm going to discuss this with my students again. And maybe I can get back to you what the young Gen Z people think about this. But uh, if you have an opinion on this, I would love to hear it. Uh, either right in the comments, wherever you're listening to this or watching this, or on social media, at Funkitpod, email funkitpod at gmail.com. Uh, I'm happy to have this discussion because so far I, don't, I didn't find the perfect solution that I would be super happy with yet, to be honest. And this leads me to um, the one big topic, or like the big topic, serious, ser very serious thing that I wanted to talk about this week. And I read an article again on, uh, I think, oh God, one of the many websites I follow, I think The Verge, but I'm not sure. Verge people, if you're listening, uh, if it was you, let me know, then I'll, I'll add, your, I'll add uh, the credits and in, in the description or so. Um, so I've, I read something about uh, do we see people, other people that are online, do we see them as humans? And this just 
perfectly fits into the discussion that I had with my colleagues um, earlier this week, which is still on Facebook, so you can check it out there. Um, so do we see others online as human? And I think that's a very, very good point because while we see others, of course, as human, to some extent we know they are human, well, we hope. Another thing I just, just before I come back, I just listened to the, the Andrew Schultz, the Rogan podcast, and Schultz was mentioning that on OnlyFans, the pe they're like people making lots of money, right? Mostly then I assume, well, not all, actually they mentioned like also some male content creators, but let's say female content creators, whoever, and that they are, it's not always always them posting the content or interacting with, with you if you pay for that, right? So there are agencies that take pictures of the models create the content and then they chat with you. It's not necessarily that content creator themselves, they talk to you even so you pay for it. And yes, that makes complete sense. I just didn't think about it before, but of course, yeah, why not? Of course, you try to streamline any kind of work. So, makes sense. So are those actually humans is the question. Maybe you talk to bots, the bots that talk sexy to you. Oh, oh my God. Anyways, back to the topic, do we see other people as human? So yes, mostly I do. I think we still do, even though we know not everybody's human out there, but I think mostly we still see people as humans. However, that doesn't mean that we treat everybody the way we, you would assume humans should be treated. It's like, it's still, yeah, I, I know I talk to a human, but if I don't agree with you, I'm just gonna shut you up. I'm just gonna leave you. I'm just gonna stop talking to you. I'm just gonna ignore your messages. I'm, I'm gonna ghost you, for example, and I, I would never ghost anyone at Funkit Pot. Um, but you know what I mean? It's so much easier to do those things online. So the question, do we see people online as humans? I think, yeah, but we don't, we don't treat them like we treat people IRL in real life, right? And that, that's no new revelation. I think it's just something that we gotta be aware of sometimes. Because to be honest, it happens to me too. If I get a message, um, like for example, right now, I'm, in, I'm in Thailand, right? My family obviously is not in Thailand. So if I get a message from my family on Telegram or Signal, see? <laughs> uh, I'm like, yeah, cool, but it's not as, I don't know, close, real as it would be in real life. So I'm not gonna reply right away, for example. My sister just texted me, I should help her, uh, should fill out a survey for her master uh, master thesis. I'm not gonna do this right away right now. I'm not gonna, I didn't even reply right away because I'm recording this podcast right now. Sorry, sis. So even, of course I treat my family well, I hope, <laughs> but even less well than in real life maybe. So, and if we now extrapolate this towards like strangers, if you interact with strangers in real life, you're still somewhat polite and measure and whatnot, and you, you let them talk first. But online, of course, that's not the case. Let's talk, even take the example of online dating. I mean, in real life, you can't just swipe left and right on people. You're like, hey, go away, hey, the next one. That's not how it works, right? But online, it's no problem. We just throw people left and right to the side and don't really care about it, even though we know they're humans. The yeah, same with like any kind of online interaction, of course. I mean, there are, comments on Facebook, on Instagram, discussions, the, the insults are like just flowing left and right. Here's an insult for you and an insult for you. In real life, this would never happen. And again, we are all aware of this or we all know this because this has happened ever since the internet has been around. It's getting worse and worse though, but it's something I think that we're not always aware of. Now that I say it, yes, we all know it, but are we really aware of it is the question. And for me, and I think as someone who studied communication and who is researching in communication and teaching communication related subjects, uh, I have to say even I sometimes, and that sounds arrogant if I say even I, but someone who's in, in communication studies, right? And media studies. Even, even I sometimes have to say, whoa, wait, that was not the correct way of treating another human being. I'm not insulting anyone, I think, but Sometimes maybe I don't spend enough time to respond or, I don't know, I say something that, that I wouldn't have said in real life. Not insulting, but still like maybe dismissive or whatever, right? Or I don't, didn't spend enough time to actually think about what, why this person said something that offended me. Maybe there wasn't even an intention to offend me, right? So that's something that I think doesn't get enough awareness. And now, actually, what I said earlier, what my colleague suggested and Joe Rogan back then, this, this, are you really sure you wanna post this would be helpful? Or this, hey, 
before you reply here, you need to wait five minutes or something like this. It's also what my colleagues suggested. Um, five minutes could be a bit too long if, you, if it's really a chat discussion or something like this, but just wait a little bit, just breathe. Like you get like two minutes and then you can reply or something like this. Right? Um, would this help? But would this also, this would, could, this would also lead to, of course, the death of real-time interaction, which is of course also something that is, could A, be very valuable, and B, um, is important for those like platforms, websites, forums, and so on to stay alive, obviously, comments. Like, and if you have to wait five minutes, then all of a sudden there are like a thousand more comments. You're like, eh, where's my comment I want to reply to? I understand that. I'm just saying that something maybe worth looking into. How do we make online communication more like IRL communication? And maybe that is something uh, that I'm actually going to research. Why, while I'm saying this, I'm thinking, huh, that's potential. Well, if there, something comes from this, uh, you're the first ones I'm going to, I will let know, of course. Um, yeah, so that, that's this week's um, media cast with like this little bit of philosophical question at the end. Do we see others as humans? Are we treating them the right way? Why aren't we doing this? And how can we fix it? If you have any uh, opinions on that, I would love to hear them uh, again at Funkitpod, all over social media, funkitpod at gmail.com for emails. And um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, of course, because that's the easiest way to stay in touch, see when something's, something's happening, see when there's new content coming out and you want to argue with me. I'm also happy to argue with you. Um, so don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And maybe if you got the time, even leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you, you're listening to this. This would be really helpful because that's how people get to find the thing here. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. As always, make sure to stay safe, take care, and I'll see you and talk to you rather soon. Sawadee kap.